normally we, we would take a look at some learning algorithm, dissect it and analyze the parts of it to see whether we can find a, a quantum algorithm that could accelerate that part of the learning protocol. But we can start thinking about learning problems the other way around. We can start from the hardware, looking at the particular quantum computer and what are the kind of things it can naturally do. So we are in this era where when the quantum computers are imperfect, so we have to factor in these imperfections. And if, if you look at the actual capabilities, we can develop completely new learning algorithms. So one of the first examples of this kind of thinking was a particular type of kernel for learning that, uh, that can be executed on a shallow circuit gate model quantum computer. So in this case, we start with a very simple state preparation. And then the only thing we are going to do on this circuit is, is a Hadamard operation, which will allow us to do interference. So in the first two learning protocols that we looked at, we talked about how you can map a problem to an Ising model. In other words, we used a kind of a Hamiltonian encoding. In this case, we are going to use the amplitude encoding. So if we are given some vector in our data set, which we normalize to one, then we can encode it in the probability amplitudes in a superposition. And so then we have to be careful of how we actually prepare it. But for some data sets, this can be approximated well with shallow circuits. So given this encoding, we can start thinking about uh, new kernels. So the kernel that we are going to calculate is exactly this one. It does not really have a classical analog. It's easy to calculate classically as well, but it's very natural to do on a gate model quantum computer. The, the shape of the, the kernel function is going to be something like this. So it's not like the exponential decay of the, the kernel that you saw in the previous video. It's slightly different and it might be useful for certain kind of data sets. So, the circuit that we are going to need, assuming that our data set is only two-dimensional, is, is the following. We will have a data qubit. Every single data point is actually going to be encoded in this single qubit. So this superposition is going to be interesting. Then we have an ancillary qubit, which will, uh, which will be entangled with the, the test instance that we are trying to calculate the kernel on and uh, the data instances that we are given in a training set. Then we will have an index qubit, which just keeps track of this index here. And then we have a class qubit, which will uh, contain the, the label corresponding to a particular data instance. And the protocol is very, very simple. First, you have to prepare a state. The state looks a bit strange. so. This is our amplitude encoded test instance, the one for which we want to, uh, to calculate the kernel. And here we have our amplitude encoding data instances. Here's our index register. For bookkeeping, it's also here. Note that these are tensor product states. So these things are not really entangled here. And uh, then we have the ancillary qubit. So uh, the, the zero state of the ancillary qubit is entangled with uh, the test instance. And uh, the excited state, the one state of the, of the ancillary, is entangled with our data instances. And then to finish it off, we also have the class qubit corresponding to the data instances. So we can think of it as a big black box that does all this preparation, plus we have some normalization cons constant to take care that you know, the superposition is actually a quantum state. And what we are doing next is nothing but this, this Hadamard operation here. So since the zero state of the ancilla is entangled with the test state, and the excited state is entangled with the, with the data instances, by applying the Hadamard gate again on the ancilla, you interfere the, the data instances with your test instance. So the state that you are going to get will have this form. You will have uh, the, the test instance plus the data instance, and the test instance minus the data instance is encoded in, in, in these vectors. So that's the interference part. And now what we do is we do a measurement on the ancilla if you have a certain probability of success. So by success, I mean that the superposition collapses 
to this particular part. And based on this, if, well, if we get the output 1, then we just discard the result and run the circuit again. And if we get this result, so we collapse it to this particular outcome, then we do a measurement on the class qubit as well. And the probability of, of uh, getting certain results here will create you exactly this kernel. So the point is that you repeatedly uh, run this algorithm. Sometimes you succeed here, and then you measure here, and based on that, you can calculate this kernel, which could be interesting for a number of applications.